Hello, I'm the producer, Jacob Cook, and UpTalk is a weekly, upbeat, uplifting, forward-looking resource show offering expert perception and advice on personal growth and development. UpTalk will feature guests with inspiring stories and messages filled with informative, life-changing insights. The delivery of this information is through a blend of common sense and practical application. UpTalk will be a big assist in satisfying the hunger for knowing the path to success. And now to our hosts, Lou Vickery and Jason Will. Well, welcome to UpTalk. I'm Lou Vickery, your host. Uh, we're so excited that you're with us. Uh, our cohort, Mr. Jason, is on Mr. Jason Will is on secret assignment. We don't know where he is or what kind of assignment he's got, but we just know he's on secret assignment. So, but we have done a great job of replacing him because our special guest today is the Dean of College Education of the College of Education at Troy University, which is my alma mater. Dr. Dion Rosser Mims, welcome. Hi, Lou. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here. <laughs> oh, we're excited to have you. This is going to be great. We'll have a wonderful time together. We're going to talk a great deal about leadership. And, and uh, you know, I've, I've, one of the things that I uh, noticed in there, there's a, the Fannin Institute of Leadership, mm -hmm. and we'll let you tell us about your background and really that's where i'd like to start sure. okay. you, and did you grow up in georgia i you know what i and i i always say that i'm a, a military brat and i don't know how old you 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 should be when you, you continue to cont maintain that label <laughs> but i i pretty much grew up in a, a military background my uh -huh. father was in the air force and he spent 20 years and so I was actually born in uh, Washington, D.C., and so from there we traveled a good bit. We were stationed in um, uh, Ohio for four years, and then from there, the Philippines, and then from there, Japan, and then we wound up eventually in Georgia. Uh -huh. uh, so I believe I was maybe in uh, the sixth grade when we uh, right. uh, wound back into or um, were stationed at, at Warner Robins, Georgia where uh, I spent, the, pretty much grew up there. And so long story short, uh, I probably ought to say I'm from Georgia, but I, I don't claim it entirely. So. You, you mentioned Warner Robins and I just mm -hmm. a little uh, sidebar here. Uh -huh. uh, when I was uh, 12 years of age, we went there to play in a little league tournament. And uh, they had had a terrible tornado there. And I learned something about tornadoes because there would be two houses missing, two houses mm -hmm. standing two houses missing, two houses standing. You could see the concrete slab. And I, I never thought, you know, that that's the way some tornadoes sure. can operate. Yeah. It's just not always a yeah. straight line. Yeah. But anyway, it was uh, uh, something that made an impression on me and on, uh, left all these years. So then uh, you uh, finally settled in and got off to school. And uh, I did. So uh, from from Warner Robins, I after I graduated from high school there, I decided to attend a small private liberally uh, liberal arts institution in North Georgia uh, called Piedmont College, and mm -hmm. I spent a good four years there doing a bunch of things and serving in leadership roles, and then uh, I decided to attend the University of Georgia, which is where I earned my master's and my doctorate. Right. Uh, and I was fortunate to also, uh, once I completed uh, my master's, to uh, secure a full-time uh, job there in the area of leadership. So oh. I sort of stumbled into <laughs> leadership. I was doing leadership work right. uh, throughout my um, you know, high school and even before going into college. I was doing leadership work and I didn't know it. Uh, but I was fortunate to get a full-time job with uh, the Fanning Institute for Leadership, which is a part of the University of Georgia. And that's okay. pretty much where I blossomed and began to yeah. learn and grow as a leader. And you, as, you, as you look back now and uh, about that experience, did you just kind of migrate into it? Or was that something that you had planned to? Uh, you know what? It was, uh, I don't think I migrated into it. I think it, it was... Um, I don't know uh, how deep I can get into the spiritual piece of this, but I do believe that every experience that I had, which led me into the, the field of leadership, that was by divine intervention. Okay. And um, like I said earlier, at, in high school, even in, in college, I was doing the work of a, lead, a leader. I mean, I mm -hmm. served 
uh, as president of organizations. Also, I um, served in really significant leadership roles along the way. And, and again, I did not realize that there was a field, there was a body of, there was a, an actual um, profession uh, that one could go into that, that embodied leadership. Right. And so what I stumbled into, and I literally stumbled uh, across the, the Fanning Institute for Leadership, I think I stumbled into it, but I think again by divine intervention, right. I was I was placed in the right place at the right time. Um, leadership and I point, I'll just be very frank with this. I think all of us engage in leadership, sure. and oftentimes we just we might not realize we're doing the work of leadership. And when I say the work of leadership, it meaning you've got to think about how you interact with with the people around you. How do you motivate people to to aspire to, to go beyond um, where they see themselves and to to reach a level of excellence that they define as excellent? Right. Uh, and, and it's it just, interesting that you say that because the different levels of what people aspire to. Sure, you know? sure. I, I have, um, I've always thought that you aspire, if you will, you stretch out and try to go for perfection. But if you land on excellence, you're doing pretty good, aren't you? Huh? you I think you are. Yes. Yeah. And and I, even even when you think you've reached the level of excellence, I think there's always more. Sure. I think so. With your book about reaching beyond, I think yeah. you're, if you're you're constantly reaching even if you think you've you've met that goal continue to right. reach there's there's another goal to to try right. to to meet but, and, and, and it's uh, exciting to do that thank mm -hmm. you for the benefit of our our uh, uh, folks watching uh i have a book that uh, called reach beyond mm -hmm. that uh was released and uh, now we in a process of redoing that and uh, uh looking forward to a, re a new release of that book I'm real excited about the potential, and thank you for mentioning Absolutely. that. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You are listening to Up Talk. I'm Lou Vickery, and our special guest in studio, Dr. Dion Rosser Mims. Uh, she is the dean of the College of Education at Troy University, and uh, just so excited to have you here. Thank you. You had uh, me over, I guess, uh, about a year ago, Absolutely, I guess. Absolutely, huh? yes. I had yes. a chance to speak and uh, enjoy And might that. I add, you were the first speaker uh, to help me to launch our lecture series within the College of Education. And okay. so I, uh, you know, I've got a fond uh, place in my heart for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, thank so you. So you answered the call, and I appreciate that. Oh, that's great. We're going to take a short break, mm -hmm. and when we come back, uh, we're going to uh, really get into some discussion about leadership. And uh, I, I will say that I remember one of the things I remember General Dwight Eisenhower uh, saying. He put up. He had all of his generals, and they were going and talking about being leaders and all. And he he put a piece of string on the table, and he said, "Gentlemen, let me show you about leadership." He got behind the string and pushed it, and it just raveled up. He got in front of it and pulled it. He says, a leader is always out front. Yeah. And then yeah. need enough, huh? Yeah. yeah. All right. We'll be back. You stay with us. Well, welcome back to Up Talk. I'm Lou Vickery and my special guest in studio, Dr. Dion Rosser Mims, who's the dean of the College of Education at Troy University. And I mentioned that being my alma mater. I, I want you to know I was. Um, uh, there are only for 10 years. <laughs> and we always... I tried not to laugh. <laughs> and uh, now, before that's, you... a, that's, you know, that's pretty short by today's standards. Yeah, right. So, well, yeah. I tell you what, in those days, but I had so much fun. Actually, uh, I went to Troy in the off season from baseball. I was playing professional baseball, and sometimes I'd get one quarter, sometimes I'd get two. I will say one thing they were so good to me because. I remember a couple of times I got in after school, it started like two weeks, and they let me take some, a minimum course hours, but <laughs> I was able to get, get in. And uh, I, had, um, I had such a wonderful time there. It was a great experience. Uh, when I started, there were 900 students. When I left, there were about 3,000. And now they're growing now it's too. Pre it's, I'd say three times that now. Yeah, yeah, probably. So what you're really speaking to is the culture of care that we've continued to maintain over, right. that, over that time. And so we, we still have that uh, perspective now. Well, that's very good. Mm -hmm. The aspect of uh, the Troy and what's going on today and the uh, 
one of the things, and I would, it's just that I remember it being a school where, you know, people, everyone knew each other, mm -hmm. you know, and that, and I think that's always. Uh, <laughs> and, and I would say that that same environment still exists even now. Yeah. You asked the question, you know, what do I do as the dean of the yeah, College of Education? Right. What, what is, you, you know, what's the, the day in the life? And. Uh, obviously, it's an administrative role, and, and part of my responsibility is to provide oversight. And I'm going to provide the canned response, and I'll get to the, the real deal. But, you know, the administrative oversight, programming, and growing enrollments. But at the end of the day, I really believe my most important job is to develop the people who touch and come through the College of Education. Okay. And what I mean by that is providing the resources and the environment for not only faculty and staff to, to, to grow, but also our students. And so if our students believe that they are um, you know, being supported by our faculty, our staff, and on, along any aspect or all aspects of their educational journey with the university, then they're going to succeed. Right. And then likewise with our faculty, if they know that I support them, um, that I have an expectation that we continue to grow intellectually, mm -hmm. relationship-wise, and building that culture, they will aspire to that level of excellence that, that we talked about earlier. Um, and so it, it just really, I was thinking about that. I was actually thinking about, you know, what are some things that, that I, I feel are important in my role? And I really firmly believe it's it's all about the people and the relationships that, yes. that we're forging every day. Right, that's great stuff. You know, uh, I, I wanna have to just, this question kind of pops in my mind. Mm -hmm. It has, I've been wondering, are we getting enough students into the education to study education? Uh, where are we there? I've, I'd heard that, you know, by shortage of teachers. Yeah, and that type yeah. Of thing. So we, across the nation, there is a challenge yes. in, in recruiting people to go into the teaching field. Do I think it's, it's something that we cannot overcome? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. um, part of it is it's, it's, nationally uh, and we, we just got to change the narrative about the important role that teachers play in developing children and even adults right. and, and and so what I've encouraged our, our faculty and our staff is to talk positively about um, you know going into the field I think it's important uh, to not make the assumption that we're, we're not talking positively about <laughs> yeah. the field it, it, and from time to time we, we I do hear on occasion uh, that uh, we have veteran uh, teachers who are just tired yes um, there's there's so many uh, responsibilities that are placed on teachers shoulders nowadays that they are not only expected to teach children um, the mm -hmm. content uh, and to educate them, but they're also educating them socially. They're having to address personal challenges, emotional challenges, right. all those things that children bring with them into the classroom. It, it, it makes the job of teaching much more challenging. All that aside, I think even though we have that challenge, I think there's incredible opportunity before us. We've got to think differently about how we educate aspiring teachers to make them uh, um, really motivated mm -hmm. and, and to really tap into that that um, passion right that I think most people have who have an affinity for teaching there's something burning inside of them where they want to um, make a difference in the lives of, of children and even adults and so we've got to really tap into that passion and to try to help to, to grow it into um, sustain it. Sure. Okay. You know, uh, the one year I, I taught mm -hmm. one year, I don't know if I had a more enjoyable experience. It was wonderful. I co coached and taught. Unfortunately, I was at the time had a family, a wife, two children, and it educate. I mean, from a financial standpoint, I just couldn't yeah. sustain it yeah. so I had to go yeah. I went into the business world. So you're you're hitting upon another and I didn't mention the you know one of the challenges that we encounter um, 
in the teaching field and in recruiting individuals in the teaching field and that is the pay and so that that's uh, that's one major detractor yeah. for folks to enter the field and so we've got to change that well i i have a history of getting on my soapbox all right <laughs> and uh, and by the way we want to express our appreciation to Mr. Jacob Cook, who handles all the behind-the-scenes stuff. He did a great job. <laughs> yeah. But J Jacob was with me when I was doing my radio show. And I can promise you that I'd get on my soapbox because it bothers me. I was a former professional athlete. But yet we pay athletes, entertainers, way too much money. And when it comes to educators, policemen, firemen, we don't want to pay them. Well, you are watching UpTalk. I'm Luke Vickery, along with Dr. Dion Rosser-Mims. We'll be back after this break. You stay with us. Well, you are watching UpTalk. I'm Luke Vickery, along with Dr. Dion Rosser-Mims. We'll be back after this break. You stay with us. Well, welcome back. It's great to have you with us today. And we're great and very blessed to have you with us, Dr. Thank you. Dan. Thank you for having me. <laughs> you know, you, uh, we, we've talked about several things, but I want to get in and talk specifically about some leadership mm -hmm. and uh, what you've learned about uh, what it takes to be a leader uh, this day and age. And uh, so I'm just going to kind of put the ball in your court. Sure. If you will, okay? okay. So I'll uh, sort of have some stream of consciousness here um, talking here. Um, so from my perspective, what is leadership? What are the important aspects that, that we should be aware of related to leadership? And I think a, a fundamental um, piece is it's about relationships how we interact with people uh, in groups, uh, how we treat one another, um, how does the, the leader uh, inspire uh, the, the people around him or her to, again, want to go above and beyond um, what's expected and to really reach a level of excellence that, that the group defines as excellent. Over the, the course of, of my years uh, of, of being uh, on in this world, in this space, I've come to understand that um, in order to be a leader, you first and foremost, you've got to understand who you are, right. why you exist, why, what's your why, what's your purpose. And I think we as leaders, we, we have to constantly reflect on, on that purpose so that yeah we are ensuring that we stay in tune and we're walking that that path we're staying on on the right, the, the right path of, of that that purpose and and there's never a day that that goes by that i i don't think about okay am i doing what i'm supposed to be doing and when mm -hmm. i say supposed to be what god has is expecting me to do right and um, and as a part of that expectation, uh, leadership is infused in 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 everything that I do. I have to be a model, a role model. Right. Um, I also have the expectation for myself. It, you know, if I'm going to ask someone to do something, I should I better be darn ready to do it right. as well. Sure. So, um, and I personally, I have made a point not to compare myself to other people that's I been think that's a very valid yeah point. i think that's that's been helpful for me um i tend to be very task oriented as a leader and so right. i have to be mindful of that because right. i can go 50 miles an hour um, i see the goal and I'm, I'm i'm mission oriented but i also have to pause and ensure that if i'm in front I'm also, I've got folks who are, who are with me. Yeah, and you're, you're kind of pulling them along, Yeah, pull, right? not, and I don't want to have to pull them along. I want to make sure they, they believe in that vision. Yeah, and, sure. and, and so in order to do that, I can't just go off and try to, try to meet that mission or that goal without ensuring that everybody who is a part of the team, that, they're, that they are truly a part of that team. Right. The other point that I want to make is I, I often say and I share with my leadership team at, at Troy uh, within the college is that I think it's important to be prepared to lead not only in front, but also lead in the center from the side and in the back. You have to be prepared to be a leader um, 
uh, in many roles. And so, right. so for example, I think there's there's value in understanding and believing there's um, a purpose or an importance of, of um, in leadership and followership. So to be a leader, you also have to be comfortable sitting in the second seat or third seat or fourth seat. Right. Um, meaning there may be skill sets that, that are required that I might not have that someone else on my leadership Absolutely. team would be better suited right. to uh, ensure that we, we meet the next goal or, or, or step. Um, the, I, and I, I'm surprised I haven't mentioned this, but um, being a mother. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a leader. Role. I know it, it, it really is. It's, it, you know, I've been blessed um, to um, have a beautiful daughter, uh, 13 years of age. And, and Luigi, I've shared with you several times, 13 going on 30. Oh, yes. Right. Um, but we're at a, an important time in her life and our our lives. And when I say our, my husband and I. Uh, she's a t she's a, a middle schooler, preteen, and if leadership were ever important in in, <laughs> in incorporating that into her development, it, it's critical now. Um, and so, what I'm I'm also learning as as a mother that the importance, as I said earlier, about walking that talk, being able to model what mm -hmm. you expect, very important. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting that we we are talking about uh, from a leadership standpoint about being able to find the strengths of others around you and utilizing those. And that's what a good leader really does, isn't it? It's in just recently with over the last, I want to say the last three months or so, I, my leadership team and I um, participated in a retreat. And one of the things that I had them to do was to complete an assessment that was focused on strengths. Yes. Uh, it's the Clifton um, Strengths Finder Assessment. And, and I sort of stumbled across this assessment because I was trying to find something that, that spoke to um, my, my understanding, my belief about leadership. And, and, and you've hit the nail on the head about, it's, it's about strengths. Uh, leveraging and um, developing the strengths that we all have and so what I encourage that my team to think about is when we're we find ourselves at conflict it is likely that we're overusing a strength right. we're either overusing a strength or underutilizing a, str a strength of ours and so that's where it, we create this this confusion and mm -hmm. conflict um, and so I, I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer uh, that that words matter. So how it, we we say things, and so I've encouraged them to think positively, and to talk, speak positively, and to think about their leadership approach and how they interact with each other from a strength standpoint. And I think that has helped us to to form um, a much stronger team spirit. You know, when we were looking for a name for this show. You know, we we talked about several things, but then we settled on up talk mm. because we mm. wanted to make sure that what we were talking about were things that were positive in nature mm. that would help you do maybe find a better way to do things than you've been doing them. You know, I I, I wrote something this morning. I'm uh, been working on another book. Always working on another book, but I I talked about the fact. That it, unless something really challenges us, it doesn't change us. Yeah, isn't that yeah. right? Yeah, I, we have I, to we have to have a challenge. Uh, you know? Agreed, agreed. Um, so if, one of well, I want to go ahead, yeah. go ahead with that point because yeah. I want, I do have another question. Okay, so I wanted to also share that a I think a a, a strength that that has been helpful for me as a leader is to view the world around me and those challenges not right. as challenges but as opportunities that's right so I, and i can truthfully say and some folks might raise an eyebrow when i say this is that i cannot think of a time that i've not been able to overcome an opportunity, opportunity. <laughs> well i always said to right in the middle right in the middle of a problem is an opportunity if you you got to look for it absolutely and it's there but a lot of times all we see is the problem we don't yes. we don't search for the opportunity and that's the reason why i'm being positive in nature is so important well the final question i got to ask you is that we we have folks watching that uh, just 
starting out, trying to get a, a footing, if you will, trying to get a grasp on mm -hmm. what it might take from a leadership standpoint. What would you leave with them? I would highly recommend constant reflection of where you are, what you want to be, and why you exist. I think if we don't know why we're here, um, what drives us in, in, in having a purpose, if, I don't think if we don't know that, serving as a leader or operating as a leader will be very difficult. You've got to know why you're here. Right. When I say here, here today and now in this hour, this second, this, why are you here? Why are you on this earth? Right. And you got to know that. I want to challenge our mm -hmm. folks watching that. Sit down, get a pen, or you can do it on your computer. Mm -hmm. But I want you to think about 10 whys. I want you to think about why you do this, why you do that, and think about your whys because you're right. The why part is that, you know, we, we in building a personal brand, mm -hmm. I, I refer to the mm -hmm. fact that we have our what. We have to have, you know, what are you all about? You understand, and we talked about strengths, and I like to focus on strengths. Mm -hmm. uh, the best way to, to improve a weakness is to improve a strength, Absolutely. right? Because it, it helps you. Yeah. The second part is your that. Uh, I enjoy doing that. Well, what is it that you really enjoy doing? And then you, but you got to understand the why the part, why. right? Why do you want to do that? And I, and I think that uh, if uh, we, we took a little more time just to sit down and get a little better grasp of who we are and why we exist, I think we'd all be better off. Agreed, right? agreed. You're a wise man. <laughs> <laughs> I heard everyone is right here. <laughs> It has been a delight having you. Oh, likewise. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's okay. been a real pleasure. Dr. Yeah. Dion Rosser Mims. If somebody would like to get in contact with you, how can they do that? Sure. I am available in a couple of ways. I'll share my uh, email address, uh, drosser-mims at troy.edu. You can also find me on Facebook. Uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, I think that's about all that I'm, <laughs> I'm touching on social media. And then I would also invite you to uh, follow the College of Education at Troy University through right. our various social media platforms. So we do have LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and something else. Um, you'll see the great work that we're doing collectively as a team. Very good. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Well, what a wonderful day we've had, Dr. Dion Rosser Mims in house with us, and uh, but now we're going to go to a segment uh, by Jason. Jason uh, is out on secret assignment, but uh, he was kind enough to do a, a, a training segment for us before we left, and so we're going to take a look at Jason Will and what he's got for us on the big whiteboard. Take it away, Jason. Oh, hey, welcome back. I've got some good tips for everybody today. I just have a feeling that a lot of you out there are struggling with how to use video to grow your personal brand. And what I've got here is the story brand marketing cycle. And I think it just makes everything like super easy and very less complex than you might think. So I'm just really gonna simplify this for our audience and I really hope this helps you because this has been super helpful to me. All right, so video and social media, the first thing I wanna talk about, is it necessary? And I would say that it is. I mean, we are, we are in a video first marketing environment. And if you want to build your personal brand and do it in a way that is the most cost effective because that's one of the things I love about this is the leverage that video and social media platforms give you to you know build awareness about your product or your service but also capture market share in the top of mind awareness arena okay so a lot of people they think like all right so I'm gonna make a video I have to create something so I, I have to be creative and they're stuck on that i'm not a creative person there's not a creative bone in my body so i just i'm not even going to do this or you know the lady down the street has her own cooking show and that was going to be my idea and she stole it 
So, you know, there's no point. I should just give up because, you know, there's already a, uh, a show about, you know, how to properly, you know, style a dog's hair or something like that. Right, Jacob? So I'm just not going to do it. You know, all the good ideas are taken. Really? Is that, do you know? Okay, I've heard that before. I've heard it all before. But I think what we have to do is, and I think, Lou, you could agree, like if you're, if you're an author, authors write about what they know. Right. I mean, you this all all the information that's in your books comes from your life, your life experiences. And I think this is where we overcomplicate it is that we all have a story to tell. All right. And people may say, well, I'm in, you know, I'm from I was raised in an era where we're very private. I'm a very private person. I don't want to share anything about me personally. And I think that's going to be a big mistake because that's what makes you relevant. The authenticity of your story is what is going to be the glue that really causes people to stick to your brand or uh, your product or your service or whatever it is that you're trying to raise awareness about or promote, okay? So when we're telling a story, what we wanna do is tell a story of origin. Okay, so I am, did I spell that right, Jacob? You have no idea. Um, and neither do I, we'll just keep rolling. But I'm a real estate agent. I think instead of me coming on video and then posting a video to social media that says, hi, I'm Jason Will and I sell houses. I mean, uh, a lot of people do that and that you'll probably just keep scrolling, right? That, that becomes what? What does that become, Jacob? Unviewed. Yeah, it's just, it's, there's nothing to it. I mean, it's, I mean, people can tune me out if I'm not telling a story of origin. But if I come on there and say, hi, my name is Jason Will. Here's the reason I got into the real estate business. Here's why I'm passionate about selling homes. Here's what I was doing before I got into the real estate business. You know, I was a school teacher and I thought I would love teaching school and have summers off. But then I realized you don't make any money as a school teacher, so you can't go anywhere. And I got just tired of watching TV. So I was like, I need to do something that makes me money. And so there started my real estate journey. All right, we're gonna move right on to attract attention. So when we're telling an honest story, we're gonna attract the attention of the audience. I've heard some people refer to Facebook as fake book. You know, it's all rose petals and just life is beautiful. And it's, you know, we're competing for who has the most perfect life on Facebook. And then you, you tell a, a, a true authentic, you know, authentic story, you get vulnerable, like, Hey, I, I really needed to make some money because I couldn't afford as a school teacher to put like new tires on my car. You know, it was bad. So I had to do something to make money and to really put food on the table. So people say, Oh, that's an honest story about, uh, why they why Jason got his real estate license, you know, he needed to make money he wanted to provide for his family um, You know, he wanted to be able to uh, Really afford to start a family and, and take them on vacations and, and just live the American dream, right? That's gonna attract attention because it's not the whole humdrum Oh, I sell houses type thing that everybody else does if you know somebody's looking to buy or sell call me so it's a little bit different and then once you are real and authentic you're gonna find that it lowers your audience's defenses because you're being real and they're not used to being, and they're not used to seeing that. They're, we're in such a superficial environment these days. It's gonna catch them off guard. It's like a brilliant marketing strategy. Hey, let me be vulnerable for a second. Who do you know that's just openly uh, and, and honestly vulnerable about what their origin is in their profession? or why they became an entrepreneur, let's say. Your honesty is going to create connection. And this is what this is all about. You have got a tool here. We've said it's a free tool where you can reach thousands of people. It is really, it's like word of mouth on steroids. You got this big giant megaphone and you can talk into it. I'm talking into this camera right now, I'm going to reach thousands of people. Lou and I have about 35 viewers, uh, we're gonna grow that into thousands, but I'll share this on social media and, I'll, and I may get several likes and comments and shares and it just grows and grows and grows organically 
And with this honest approach, I'm going to create connection. People are going to remember me. They're going to remember my story and they're going to feel like they know me. They're going to build rapport. So before I even walk into somebody's living room to tell them what their home is worth, uh, how I'm going to market the home to sell it, they already feel like they know me. So if they're interviewing two or three other agents, I've already got a leg up because there's already a relationship there that was established virtually. That's powerful. That is powerful and it's free. I didn't have to spend all this money on radio commercials, TV commercials, signage, all that stuff. It just all happened uh, at a very, very low cost. I call it, uh, you know, Lou's probably familiar with sweat equity. You heard that before, Lou? Mm -hmm. sure. I call this tech equity. I came up with that on my own. And uh, I, I'm just going to put this here that it's trademark. It's not really, but uh, I'm just putting that there just in case uh, somebody believes me. But I'm going to build rapport with these people. And then I love this part right here, this reverse prospecting part. So people actually call me. They reach out to me and say, hey, I want to do business with Jason Will because he is, he's just different. He, he tells stories and those stories uh, create connection and that connection, you know, evolves into rapport. And just whenever I think about somebody that's, you know, when somebody says like, hey, do you know somebody that sells homes? I think of Jason Will because I tell stories and stories create connection. Now, when they hire me to sell their home, that's when I actually have to step in and do the work. I actually have to create a stellar experience. This experience is my brand. How I serve these people is my marketing. It's how uh, they will discuss me, how they will talk about me when I'm not in the room, which is really, really important. And then what does that experience provide? It provides another story for me to tell in the form of, let's say, a testimonial, uh, or uh, let's say I was able to sell a home, and this happens quite often, I'll just, you know, a little plug, uh, where, you know, I may be the second or third real estate agent that somebody hires, but I'm actually able to get the home sold. And they've just given up hope. And they want to move closer to their grandkids, and it's, there's a lot of emotion tied to this sale, and they just say, well, we're just going to have to stay where we are and just drive six hours to see the grandkids. You know, there's a lot of tears, Jacob, in this. And I come in here and I solve this problem. This is why I am authorized to wear this Superman outfit because I'm a superhero. You see what I'm saying? I make things happen, Jacob. <clears throat> I just lost my train of thought. But you get what I'm saying, right, Lou? There's another story to tell, and these people are also going to go forth from there and tell the stories of their experience working with me that is going to attract attention, which is going to lower their defenses because I've heard it say that about 80% of the population has a negative connotation with real estate agents. But immediately, if I create a raving fan, it's going to attract the attention of somebody that's had a bad experience they're gonna lower their defenses and be open to creating this connection, building this rapport, and they're gonna call me. It just, it just repeats itself. And this is all because I create consistent, consistent, authentic, and valuable videos. And I would just end by saying that I'm sure this is all very legible. I would just end by saying that do some research on storytelling and the power of storytelling and how the subconscious brain reacts to a story versus a marketing piece that is just has an origin in selling a product versus telling a story. Do some research on that. I think you'll be enlightened. I hope you enjoyed my time here today. I think if you are able to implement this, you're going to find great success. And remember that success favors speed of implementation. If you got some value out of my tips here. You're going to find so much more of that in this book. It's available on Amazon, Motivators. So look at, for Motivators on Amazon or visit louvigrybooks.com.
Hi, I'm Dan Vega, and thank you for watching our channel. I want to take a second to tell you about a resource that's helping thousands of people across the country, Blue University. Blue University is the premier online business school for entrepreneurs and business leaders. You know, if you find yourself in a day-to-day -day grind where you've lost your joy or you're just tired of struggling, then check out blue.university. That's B-L-U dot university. I can promise that you receive nothing short of a multi-million dollar education. And if you want a completely different life in three to six months and a way to create wealth in five years or less, then again, check it out. That's blu.university. Find out why blue is the new color of success. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel or to give us a good rating, but that's only if you see value. And when you do receive value, make sure to share it with someone else. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.